Hi, everybody. So today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the argument presentation. I think at this point, since you've already done a presentation, what is expected of you should be pretty clear. Um, you're going to make a visual with some pictures that are cited in APA. Um, it's a little more visually interesting than this. Do a little design, background design. Um, you're going to be creating this presentation um, and uploading the PowerPoint or the Prezi that you used, as well as a, including an MP4 attachment for me or a YouTube link for me so that I can hear you presenting your argument. So that's on the one side. Um, I think the actual presentation shouldn't be anything new, but you might be questioning, what am I actually doing with this presentation? Um, and so that's why I made in the announcement, I included an example, um, a link to this example presentation. And you can use this, you can use this as a template. Um, and I also included a video of me presenting it so you can hear kind of how I'm going to explain these things. But I also wanted to make you another video that talks a little bit more about figuring out what to put in this presentation because that's a bit of a hard part. Um, so right now I'm still, I should, I think I commented on pretty much everybody's discussion posts, but there were a couple that came in a little bit later. So um, check your discussion posts and see what I had to say about your topic and your claim that you posted there for advice on that. Uh, you can see here that I've got my topic, just the neutral topic that I'm going to be discussing, dress codes in higher education. And then you can see that I still have this idea of dress codes in higher education, but this part in the middle is my real claim. I'm actually taking a stand and I'm saying, nope, they shouldn't be mandatory. So we're moving away from informative statements. We're not going to say things like, um, this is a really impactful thing because that is probably just obvious, whatever you're talking about. It's it's obvious that something's impactful from all of the information you have already gathered um, in the first paper that you did, or if you're choosing a new topic um, that you'll kind of do behind the scenes. Because in this paper, you're not just telling people, well, this is impactful, this is important, this is happening, this is going on. You're actually taking a stand. Now you could take a stand and say like, and this is the solution, or you could just take a stand and say like, okay, if people are divided on this topic, here's the side that I pick. You gotta make a choice because this is an argument paper. So you have to be arguing something. So I'm gonna argue that dress code should not be mandatory in institutes of higher education. This slide I say is optional. Um, I'm gonna include a little bit of background. You do not have to include this slide if you think that it, it's the stretch to include it. And then I have this support slide. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to come up with three reasons why. So I mentioned in the announcements, if you want, you can download this, um, let me pull it up. You can download, we'll go back here. This worksheet that you worked on before with the videos, um, the argument analysis worksheet, if you'd like to download this and use it to help you, um, not this one, that's a sample, but if you want to download the blank version of this website and, um, there we go, <laughs> and fill it out to help you, that's totally fine. Um, because it does kind of show you like, okay, so the topic leads to these reasons and each reason leads to a counter argument. One of the things that you might be finding as you're doing this is that arguments are in fact very complicated. So I tried to amend it and it got too complicated. As you can see, I was like, oh, maybe I should make one. I don't want the boxes to confuse you. The boxes and the arrows can get confusing, um, especially because when I look at this all laid out, this thought kind of repeats another thought. When you go to actually organize your paper, one of the things I'm gonna try and help you do is come up with the best way 
to put your paper in some organized fashion based on sort of the ideas that you're putting forward here. This is why it's actually really important to me that you include the PowerPoint version so that I can go back and look at it. Um, sometimes listening to you just presenting, um, it might not be, it might not stick with me as well as when I can actually see it written out. Um, so that's one reason I really want you guys to include the PowerPoint because one of the things I've been trying to help you with is how, now that you've got this argument, to best organize it. So the reason I wanted to make this video really quickly um, was to basically tell you that I think that the easiest thing to do, you can use the map if you want to, but if you're finding yourself getting bogged down in the arrows, maybe just come back to the template and simplify it. You said that you think that dress code should not be mandatory. Why? Here's three reasons why. Boom, boom, boom. So what I want you guys to do um, is start with these with this thesis, with your uh, clear opinion, and then come up with three supporting reasons why. It can be helpful to sort of put a mental because in your head first. Because dress codes can enforce racism, sexism, classism, and transphobia. Because dress codes don't actually help students learn valuable skills about professional etiquette. Because dress codes uh, put too much focus on an aspect of professional life that might soon be obsolete. These three are reasons why I believe this in the instance of this paper. Um, the counter arguments and the rebuttals. Okay, so sometimes you have counter arguments that directly respond to reasons, and that's fine. Sometimes you have counter arguments that directly respond to your point of view, but don't necessarily speak directly to a support. So figuring that out is going to be one of the things that we need to do. That's one of our tasks that we're going to need to kind of work on together once you do this. That's why if you're having trouble using this as a guide, it might just be easier to say, okay, I'm going to pick a claim. There's my claim. On the support slide, I'm going to list one, two, three. You can even number them reasons why I believe that this claim is true. And then for the counter arguments, just think of reasons why people would disagree with you. A counter argument is what the opponent thinks. So you say there shouldn't be dress codes in higher education. Think about the little voice in your head that's going to argue or the little voice that you would encounter in the real world who's going to be like, but what about this? Um, actually, think about the counter argument side. What are they going to say in response to this? If you have something specific that you like, you know that this one is going to, this support specifically is going to really piss people off, then you can have a counter argument that speaks directly to a point. That's kind of how counter arguments work. They can speak directly to a reason or they can speak to the position as a whole. I just want you to figure out something somebody would say in disagreement with your position and then underneath it, rebut or refute that directly. So the counter argument and rebuttal one. And so your rubric, I think, asks you to come up with two of them. And so that's what I want you to do. Um, so the one counter argument to this might be that students entering the professional world need to know how to dress. My rebuttal to that is creating a dress code does not actually help with developing this skill. And you're going to find if you look at my paper that when it actually shakes down, this rebuttal is very similar to one of my supports. So I might actually organize my paper in the format of support, or I might, I might actually have the rebuttal come first and then the counter argument. I might move things around, but we don't need to worry about that yet. Right now, all I want you to do is come up with, for the counter arguments, uh, come up with two reasons why an opponent might disagree with your stand. And for each of those reasons, come up with a rebuttal or a refutation that directly speaks to this. So my opponent says students entering the professional world need to know how to dress. Um, my response is, yeah, but making a dress code doesn't actually teach them how to dress in the real world. It just teaches them how to dress for the dress code during a finite time. So that's what you're going to want to do. And then the conclusion kind of sum up in a sentence something, uh, some the basic of your argument. So that's how I want you to think about it. If you want to use a map, you can. You want to add more boxes, go for it. Add more arrows, have at it. But essentially what you're doing is you're picking a topic, you're making a claim, you're coming up with three reasons to support that claim, and two reasons why somebody who is opposed to what you're saying would offer in support of their argument. And then for each of those, you're going to have a direct response. So... That's the task for the moment.